Do your videos sound like this? Well, not to worry because I've got five tips for you that will help improve the audio in your videos and make it sound more like this, and most of them won't cost you anything. The quality of the audio in your videos actually has a bigger impact on your audience's perception of your overall quality than the actual quality of the video itself. So let's talk about some really easy ways that you can improve the quality of the audio in your videos. And thankfully, most of these things really don't require much financial investment at all. They just require a little bit of investment of effort and time on your part before you hit that record button. There are a couple things that have a potential cost involved, but we'll talk about that along the way. So tip number one is to eliminate that noise. If your studio recording space for your content creation is in your home like it is for me, all of us, we have sources of noise that we can't control. There's always gonna be, you know, a siren going by or a loud vehicle or a lawnmower. And there's only so much you can do to control that sound. You can use some sound treatment to try and muffle those sounds a little bit, but they can't be eliminated. But what you can do is focus on the sources of noise that you have control over. That would be things like your AC or furnace, computers that are running, fans, window AC units, all of those things are sources of noise inside your recording space that you have control over. For example, this is how the audio sounds in a space without sound treatment. There's room reflections, there's noise going on outside, I don't have the window covered, my AC is running, and there's a computer fan in the background. And now this is how the audio sounds with all of the sources of noise that I have control over shut off. I've turned off my AC, I turned off the extra computer that was running in the background that I'm not gonna be using for this video. Now this will make a big improvement in the quality of your audio if you don't do any post-processing at all, meaning you don't apply any effects or audio processing in post after you record. But even if you do, even if you have noise reduction software that you use, this is still going to improve the quality of your audio because noise reduction software can only do so much before it makes your audio sound overly processed with artifacts and it just lowers the overall quality. So the less you have to use it, the better. All right, tip number two is to add some sound treatment to your environment. So this is basically just taking step number one and going a step further. Adding some sound treatment will help to do two things. Sound treatment around the exterior or perimeter of your recording space will help to absorb reflections as well as muffle the sounds coming from outside. Now, sound absorbing materials are not sound proofing, so don't expect them to eliminate sounds coming from outside like cars or lawnmowers or sirens. Sound proofing is very different and much more expensive. This is how the audio sounds with my microphone positioned on a boom about eight inches away from me, which is an appropriate position, but I don't have any sound treatment set up. So my window is not covered, the door isn't covered, my sound blankets are not set up on stands. And now this is a sample with my sound treatment set up and the microphone in the same position out of frame about eight inches away from my mouth. Sound absorbing sheets like the ones I have from a company called Audimute, they're available on Amazon. I do have an affiliate link in the description if you wanna check them out. The great thing about these is that they're very effective at absorbing reflections and they also help to muffle outside noise. They come with grommets across the top so you can easily hang them up and they're sized to cover just about any standard size window. You can also use these to cover up doors. The second kind of sound treatment that I personally use in my recording space are sound blankets. These are really versatile and useful sound absorbers, especially if you can't permanently alter or attach things to the walls or ceiling where you live. The sound blankets that I use are a brand called Producer's Choice and they're available on a website called vocalboothtogo.com. Again, I have a link in the description if you're interested. These are a little bit more affordable than the sheets from Audimute. They run $59 to $65 depending on which style you get. The great thing about these is that they are purpose made to be sound absorbers. They weigh about 10 pounds a piece for the 80 inch by 80 inch size and they do a great job of absorbing reflections. You can hang them on a wall, you can drape them over furniture, or you can do what I do, which is use a light stand with a crossbar on the top, and then just use basic clamps to hang them from that crossbar, and then you'll have a mobile sound absorbing blanket wall, basically. I have two of those in my space, and that has really improved the quality of my audio. A couple more things to keep in mind as far as some more regular around the house items. Recording in a carpeted room, of course, is gonna mean you don't have to worry about sound reflecting off the floor. If your studio recording space has a hardwood or hard surface floor, consider getting one or more area rugs to cover up as much of it as possible so that sound isn't reflecting off of it. 
You also can use regular around the house items to help reduce the reflections in your space. For example, take some extra blankets or a comforter or extra curtains you might already have, drape those over large pieces of hardwood furniture, cover windows with them, hang them over doors. In fact, that's exactly what I do with the door in my recording space. I just have a couple of those command hooks on the back of the door and I hang a double layer of curtains up to help reduce reflections in the space and muffle the sound from the outside. So you can get some pretty effective sound treatment just with some of your around the house items that you might already have as well. All right, tip number three is selecting the proper microphone for your recording space as well as your type of content that you're going to be creating. If you're making YouTube videos like this with talking head style or interview or product review style, then you're not gonna want a microphone that takes up a lot of space on screen in front of you because you might need to move your hands around, especially if you're doing product reviews. So an out of frame, a boom microphone or a shotgun microphone, chances are that's gonna be a good choice for you. And we'll talk more about positioning that microphone in the next tip. But if your content is an interview or video podcast style, then you have other microphones to choose from, including microphones that traditionally are on screen positioned closer to you, such as dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. And here is where content creators can kind of fall into the trap of the sound quality of condenser microphones. This is a Neumann TLM 103 large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's a fantastic condenser microphone. The sound quality is amazing. However, in this space with no sound treatment set up, I've got room reflections, the windows uncovered, I've got outside noise, and I'm only using this to really prove the point that just getting an expensive microphone or any expensive piece of gear is not going to suddenly make the audio sound that much more professional if you don't make some improvements to the environment that you're recording in first. Now this is the Zoom ZDM1 Dynamic Super Cardioid Microphone. It's actually got a tighter pickup pattern because it is super cardioid, but more importantly, it's a dynamic microphone that is made for podcasting and broadcasting. And the cost is $49, about 20 times less than the TLM 103. And again, in this case, I'm only using this particular microphone to prove a point that in this environment, you are better off using a lower cost dynamic microphone than a higher cost condenser microphone. A dynamic microphone is not going to suddenly eliminate all the noise from your environment, but it should be much less apparent in the final audio than it would be with a large diaphragm condenser. So choosing the right type of microphone for the type of content that you make as well as for your environment is an important decision. But you also have to consider where you position that microphone. Tip number four is all about microphone placement. You wanna position your microphone to get the best possible audio. For every type of microphone out there, from lavalier to shotgun microphone, they all have good and bad ways to position them when it comes to the quality of the audio. For example, some very popular video microphones like the Rode VideoMic line, which I did a whole video about, link in the description and in the corner if you wanna check it out. They are sold as camera mount microphones, and that's because they're actually sold with a little cold shoe mount so you can mount it right to the uh, shoe on the top of your camera. And that can be very handy, especially if you are vlogging with the camera you know, relatively close to you, and you can just attach your microphone to it, and now your microphone is right there. However, it's easy to fall into the trap of using them as a camera mount microphone when your camera is further away from you, and that would be a mistake. For this sample, I have the microphone positioned right above my camera lens, so it's positioned as if it was camera mounted. And especially if you have a microphone which is sort of marketed as a camera mount microphone, like say a Rode VideoMic NTG, which is a very nice microphone, by the way, it's tempting to just go ahead and mount it on your camera because it's basically in the name. And now this is how the audio sounds with the microphone positioned just out of frame on a boom arm about eight inches away from my mouth. This is going to be a much better position for the microphone because it's going to help minimize the reflections coming into the microphone. And it's also gonna make my voice louder relative to the rest of the noise that I can hear. So the signal to noise ratio will be greater, which is a good thing. So especially if you don't have sound treatment in your space, you will notice a big improvement in your audio quality just by getting that microphone closer to you. And that's a good general rule to go by no matter what type of microphone we're talking about. Most microphones are gonna sound better when they're closer to you because then your voice will be the loudest signal that the microphone is picking up. We could talk about microphone positioning for a long time, but for this video, I'm gonna leave it at get your microphone closer to you rather than further away. My last tip for you, tip number five, is to take advantage of your microphone's polar pattern or pickup pattern 
and strategically place any remaining sources of noise that you simply can't get rid of. So for this example, I'm using the Samson Q9U, another different microphone just for fun. This one's pretty popular because it's got both USB and XLR connectivity. So for this tip, we're gonna assume that you're using your laptop to actually record the audio for your content. So whether it's the audio that you're going to sync in post with your video, or if it's audio for your podcast, you're recording the audio into your computer while you're recording your video. So for the example, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually not gonna rely on this computer to get noisy. I'm going to play the sound of some loud computer fans on my phone here and then just move it around to demonstrate. So here we go. This is a pretty loud noise, pretty loud computer fan. This is, sounds like a server room rather than an individual computer. If this was positioned right here, right next to me, this would not be an ideal position because we are in the area of sensitivity for this microphone's cardioid polar pattern. So the best thing to do, of course, is first get it as far away as you can. Even if it's still in the sensitive area, the sensitive side of the microphone, getting it farther away is going to make a difference in how much of that noise is present in the audio. But if we take advantage of the polar pattern now and we move this around the side, now I'm at about the 90 degree position, about 12 inches, 11, 12 inches away from the microphone, and this is how much of it you can hear. And now I'm holding it out about 12 inches away from the rear of the microphone. So this is the least sensitive area of the polar pattern. Same volume, I didn't change anything except for the position. So this is what it would sound like if you were about a foot away from the rear of the microphone. And now I've combined both the polar pattern positioning as well as distance. So now I've moved it about four feet away from the microphone and it is still directly behind it. So it's on a, another surface about four feet away from the microphone. And this is how much of that noise you can hear. So as you can see, it really makes a difference in your audio. Even if you can't get rid of a source of noise, maybe it won't be quite as loud as my example was, but even if you have something like a computer that you can't turn off, where you position it will make a difference. So those are my five tips for improving the quality of the audio in your video. Number one, eliminate all noise that you can. Number two, add whatever sound treatment you can. Number three, pick the right microphone for your environment and your type of content. Number four, position that microphone in the best location to improve the audio. And number five, position any remaining sources of audio that you cannot eliminate in the best possible location to minimize them in the final recorded audio. So take those few extra minutes before you hit the record button and help ensure that the quality of your audio doesn't distract from the overall message of your content. Let me know in the comments if you found these tips helpful and let me know if you have any tips of your own for other content creators. Do me a favor and hit that like button if you did find it helpful so you two can show the video to more people. And don't forget to subscribe to the Semi-Pro Tech and Gear channel so you can be notified when I come out with future videos. Happy creating and I'll see you next time.